Okay, so we've all played Rock Band and Guitar Hero games. Whether you've owned it or played it at a friend's house or maybe even with some strangers at a convention, the games seemed to be so popular because they were everywhere. So where did they go? And what are the chances we'll ever see a music rhythm game as popular as these ever again? Well, today on Game Ranks, we're gonna ask the burning question, what killed Rock Band and Guitar Hero games? The very first Guitar Hero game was released way back in 2005 by the joint venture of the publisher Red Octane and the developer Harmonix. And so this game revolutionized an entire portion of the game industry forever. As you probably know, the game required players to use a controller resembling a guitar that plugged directly into your PlayStation 2, which was the only console the game supported at the time. Since the game implemented popular rock songs, players were able to shred in front of a crowd by hitting notes that flew at them in perfect time by strumming and pressing the corresponding fret on the controller. The game was so simple, but so freaking addicting and an absolute blast. It did almost what Tony Hawk's Pro Skater did for making people want to learn how to skateboard. This did that for guitar for some folks. The concept of the game itself was brilliant because it added instruments and plastic peripherals and modern music into already popular rhythm-based games. It's really just a brilliant marriage. In 2007, the Guitar Hero franchise got major backing as Activision acquired the game's publisher, Red Octane. So Activision released Guitar Hero 2 in 2007 for the Xbox 360, unleashing the genre to a new base of the video game market. As they expected, the game was a massive success with Xbox owners and PlayStation owners, so with that, the company continued working on the series until the release of Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock for PS2 and 3 and 360 and Nintendo Wii and PC. But a major shift happened that same year. As Red Octane was acquired by Activision, Harmonix was acquired by MTV Games, a major subsidiary of Viacom. This allowed the previous Guitar Hero developer to pursue a new venture, and they did. In late 2007, Harmonix with MTV Games as its publisher released Guitar Hero's main competitor, Rock Band. Rock Band was similar to the Guitar Hero franchise in the fact that the gameplay was just almost exactly the same, but with one major difference, and it made all the difference. It seems obvious now, but at the time, Rock Band didn't just stop at guitar. The game included a drum kit and a microphone for vocals. These additions gave a really new and awesome dynamic to the genre that's made its replayability really shoot up and make it even more fun at parties. Both Rock Band and Guitar Hero games saw major success in the following years, and they both continued to release games. Guitar Hero expanded into a wider array of instruments and Rock Band made entire games focus around specific bands like Green Day and The Beatles. And although there were some changes made to the hardware, the game stayed pretty much the same. In 2015, both Guitar Hero and Rock Band released their final fully-fledged games in the main canon. Since then, the hype over new music rhythm games of this type has just been kind of non-existent. So what happened? As always, when I'm trying to see what happened to a once popular video game, I look at how much each new release actually sold. A lack of new and innovative gameplay from both of these IPs and an oversaturation of the market is really what might have done these games in for good. I mean, seriously, these games are definitely a lot of fun, but after a while, they get old. It makes sense you would burn yourself out. No one wants to buy the same exact video game every year, most of the time. I'm not just saying that, I think the sales numbers speak for themselves. Guitar Hero 3, my favorite of the Guitar Hero games, uh, this was developed by Neversoft in 2007, sold double what the OG Guitar Hero game did, at almost 3.5 million copies in its first few months. After that, the franchise took a sharp turn to a slow ride into eventual obscurity. After putting the series on hiatus in 2011, Activision tried once again. The franchise's latest release, Guitar Hero Alive in 2015, had a weak sales showing, unfortunately. Although complete sales numbers aren't available, according to Eurogamer, Activision said that the game was met with, and I quote, lower than expected performance, and that they weren't going to release another Guitar Hero game that cycle. Even with the Rock Band series, with their release of Rock Band 4 in 2015, seemed to not bode well either. After a disappointing release, the hardware division and par publisher Mad Cats decided to cut their staff by 37% to save $5 million. That is absolutely crazy. 37% is almost half of the entire company that pushed out this game. So the sales numbers show that making these games just isn't that profitable anymore. But another problem with these games is that it just might not be the financially smart decision for new consumers to shell out money on expensive hardware and accessories. I mean, drum kits, guitar controllers, and microphones are expensive. And on top of the $60 retail price at a game, the entire experience can just feel like a small loan. I mean, seriously, 189 bucks for a bundle? That's about half the price of a new console, and it's fine when these games don't release that often, but it seems like some people just couldn't swing it anymore. Another reason for the genre's demise might be based on a very early event in the history, the split between Harmonix and Activision. 
When working in concert, the two seem to be able to create a hit franchise with little to no major competition. When acting as competitors, the market might have become so saturated that consumers were just sick of having to keep up with two different franchises. Whatever the reason is, what we can all agree on is that these games literally created and popularized an entire genre of video games. It's worth pointing out that, especially on the Rock Band side, a huge community blossomed out of this. There are people still actively enjoying and having so much fun with Rock Band games out there. And I think that's worth pointing out. I mean, look at the excitement around Harmonix's newest game, Drop Mix. It's totally awesome. But the Rock Band and Guitar Hero games will forever have a spot in my memory as one of the most creative and fun video game franchises ever. These two games have impacted an entire industry, and sure, although there has been some weird spin-offs like DJ Hero, the games will forever live on. And for now, all we can do is really go back and play the earlier installments, continuing to just keep grinding away at Through the Fire and Flames on Expert. Good luck with that. But that's us, that's our perspective on what happened to these legendary games, whether you thought they were a gimmick or a really good party game or something that you took incredibly seriously or you just never played them. Either way, we wanna hear your perspective down in the comments. If you've ever touched one of these games, maybe even the newer ones, we wanna know what you're thinking. What's your favorite of the Rock Band series? And what's your favorite of all the Guitar Hero games? If you enjoyed this video and maybe learned a thing or two, consider clicking the like button or subscribing because it really helps us out. We put out new videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.